Hello friends, uh, I'm Piali and I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. Today I have uh, Mr. Peter Stevens with me from Switzerland. Peter is a certified Scrum trainer and today we will be talking about uh, personal agility framework, a framework Peter has created and he will be sharing all the details about personal agility with us today. So over to you, Peter. And I would request you uh, to tell us something more about yourself before we move forward, in case somebody is uh, listening to you for the first time, <clears throat> so they can know about you. Okay, well, thank you, Piali. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, I was in uh, Bangalore, as you know, a couple, uh, about a month and a half ago. And, uh, you know, we had a meetup and we had a workshop, and it's always great to uh, uh, to work with you and to, and to come to India to, to talk about personal agility. Uh, I'm going to talk about myself in a minute. For the moment, uh, well, I'll just say that uh, my day job is a scrum trainer. Uh, what I try to do is uh, inspire people to change their lives for the better. Um, and that's actually uh, the topic of my talk. Uh, we have one title, which is the power of personal agility, but that sounds like a marketing, marketing thing. Um, when we, uh, but the essence of personal agility is questions. And uh, personal agility consists of six questions, which if you um, ask yourselves the questions and listen to the answers, uh, they can really change your life. And so that's what we'll, that's what I'd like to talk about today. Um, before we do that, what I'd like to do is, uh, we've got a couple of polls. And what I'd like to do is kind of uh, listen to, you know, see if we can collect some experience from uh, from our listeners. And so let's start with the first question. Are you living the life you want to live? And I believe, Piala, you can set up a poll so that people can answer that question and share their, share their feelings with us. Sure, I'm launching the first poll. Okay. Launched it. Okay, I see it. So guys, if you, uh, gals, if you would like to just answer the question, are you living the life you want to live? Okay, we got five possibilities, 100% uh, every day. Second possibility, most days are good. Third possibilities are some days are up and some days are down. And the fourth possibility is I do what I need to do for my job and my family. And the last possibility is, uh, well, actually, I'm not doing what I want. 74% have voted. 74% have voted. Okay, 77%. So I think we'll give it another 15 seconds to see if we can get that up to 100%. Uh, and then we'll share the uh, share the results. Crumb roll, please. Okay, two, one, zero. 83, well, I guess 83 is as good as it's going to get. So why don't you close the poll and let's share the results with everyone. Sure. Yeah. So okay. Okay. <clears throat> and so, wow. So when we look at this, we see that there are 5% of you, so roughly uh, 1 in 20, can say, yes, I'm living the life I want to leave. Uh, about a quarter of you or 23% are saying most days are good. Big majority saying ups and downs. And um, what, what really surprises me is how many people uh, with the last answer, I'm not doing what I want, um, 20%. And okay, so can we just close this? I'm gonna, we asked this question at the Scrum Gathering and in uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Minneapolis this summer. And let's just see if there's any uh, any insights that we can get. So we'll see that the, um, um, I don't know, the attendees of the Scrum Gathering, maybe they're doing more Scrum, I'm not sure, but most of them were saying most days are good. Um, still a very small percentage saying 100% um, uh, every day. A uh, lot of people with ups and downs, okay? And I think that that's, you know, I think that's really the challenge because a lot of us feel like we're, we're being, um, you know, we're being pulled along by uh, forces bigger than ourselves, and it's, it's, it's hard to feel like you're in control of your life. Now, another thing which I'd like to look at is, um, you know, many of us have goals, things we'd like to accomplish. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to ask everyone to write into the chat window, and please make sure it's addressed to, uh, uh, to everyone so we can all see it. Uh, <coughs> 
what I'd like to ask you to do is uh, just share, you know, if you've got uh, an important goal in your life that you've been, you know, working on or wish, maybe you've been working on it, maybe not, but you've wished that you'd achieve it or you'd like to have achieved it. I mean, in my case, my important goal is I wish I'd written my book by now. By now. Um, so what is an important goal that you have not yet achieved? Okay, and I'd just like you to, um, you know, write your answers. We can't do a poll on this because that's not the way the system is set up. Um, but just, uh, you know, put your answers into the, uh, into the chat window. And you know we'll we'll collect answers for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, so take a little bit longer to answer because it's uh, like free form. Can you see the answers, Peter? Or uh, I, I should. I cannot see the answers. I'm I am not seeing the answers. Sure, I just uh, will share the answers with you. Can you see it? Okay. Um, no. Uh, in the control, oh, I should be. you can you can see the question uh, question bar. You can just ah yeah. ah okay. I was coming in the in the questions. Okay, I was actually looking in the actual chat window. No, it's coming in the question. Ah okay. So lots of interesting. Oh, I want to I want to speak at a TEDx as well. Going to Canada, spiritual enlightenment, want to be in a leadership role, practicing Kaizen. Well, getting into a leadership role looks like a bit of a challenge. Okay, so we'll just kind of ah, uh, wake up early to go to bed early. Oh, another TEDx speaker. Got those of you who want to speak speak at a TEDx, maybe send me a private message and tell me what you want to talk about. That sounds interesting. Okay, so let's give this another 15 seconds. You know, so if you're going to hit, if you want to hit enter, now would be a good time, good time to do so. Ah, making my parents satisfied. Now that's a huge one because, uh, you know, I was just I was just reading that, you know, as a parent, the best thing that you can do is be supportive of your kids. And not being supportive of your kids, you know, that's something that your kids are going to, that's a burden that your kids are going to carry with them forever. Oh, and I see I'm not the only one who wants to write a book. This is cool. Okay. So let's, um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's, it's a little bit, I, I can't really summarize the results here. Uh, if you haven't typed in your answer yet, just keep typing because, um, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll collect the, um, collect the answers a bit later. Um, what I'd like to <coughs> what I'd like to do is share with you the results that uh, came out of the scrum gathering and here you see it divided divided into a percentage um, the, the the biggest single item was health people wanting to work on their own health uh, maybe a specific issue maybe a general issue uh, maybe being overweight uh, maybe smoking um, it's funny I was just in Vietnam and they said uh, well you know if you um, if, if personal agility helps you quit smoking, that's a reason not to do personal agility in Vietnam, which everybody thought was very funny. Um, the next one is finances, so things like uh, getting uh, getting your retirement, um, saving money, uh, business and profession, um, the startup making the first sale, getting a promotion. Um, education was about things like getting a cert certification or getting a degree. Uh, hmm. Every time I edit this, I try to make it easier to read, and then every time I reload the file, it's harder to read again. Uh, the light blue one, the teal one, is do something. So I want to climb Mount Everest or something like that. Uh, improving myself is a bit more general. Uh, some of it is like about peace of mind, um, having um, uh, having things in, in perspective. Also things like learning to play the piano. A um, couple of people want to achieve, you know, want to buy stuff. I want a car. I want a camper van. Um, you know, I, you know, something, you know, some sort of possession they'd like to have. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that uh, family, you know, family having a family, having children, doing things for my family was fairly far down on the list. Um, and some people wanted to uh, change the world in some way. My favorite answer was world domination. Um, and some people wanted to do very specific things in sports, usually around uh, uh, triathlon and biathlon. So, you know, so, you know, we've got these goals. We wish we could do them. Um, it's very, it's, it's not always easy. Um, 
it's not always easy to achieve them. And so what I'd like to do, what I'd like to ask you next is how long have you wanted to achieve that goal? How long have you been working on this goal? So we've got less than six months, between six months and a year, between one and two years, uh, between three and five years or more than five years. So Piali, let's, uh, let's start the next poll and see what we come up with. Sure. So I have launched uh, the second poll. Okay. And once again, we'll give that a, you know, a minute, maybe a minute and 15, maybe a minute and a half. Give people time to answer. Yeah. And 78% have already voted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you haven't voted, now is the time to wake up and pay attention to the uh, to the webinar. So it looks to me like things have smoothed out, so we'll give it uh, five more seconds. Last call, four, three, two, one, ding. So let's uh, close the poll and share the results. Here is the result. Okay, so <clears throat> gee, that's uh, that's pretty evenly dis evenly distributed. Uh, some goals about good little bit more than a quarter, 27% of you said less than six months. Some of you who've been thinking, working on things 20% for six months to a year. Uh, 30, almost 30% between one and two years. And it's actually, if we take three years or more, 25%, so that's a quarter again. So yeah, so, you know, this, um, you know, getting things done, getting these big things done can be, uh, can be a huge challenge. So why don't we uh, hide the poll now and we'll look at, uh, we'll compare that to the results at the, uh, the Scrum Gathering. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, <coughs> you know, and here you can see on the left, uh, roughly 20%, uh, more than five years, 25%, uh, three to five years, probably closer to 30%, one to two years. Yeah. So, you know, it's, 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 we have these things, we say we want to do them. By the way, when I started to doing personal agility, I had this really simple thing. I'd been, I'd been wanting to fix my daughter's bicycle for, I don't know, six months or a year. Um, and somehow never really quite got uh, got around to it. So I'd like to ask you a simple question. What would you do? Uh, this is this is how my partner in crime or my partner in, in personal agility, Maria Mattarelli, formulated it. She said, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? If you knew that you would set out to do something and you would achieve it, and you just knew that that were true, wouldn't that be cool? So. What I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, I'd like to pretend for a moment that you you know that you do that you're that you're not going to fail you know you're going to succeed at doing what you're doing, and let's talk about how you did it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you the six questions to change your life. Uh, now we're fortunate because one of the early adopters, almost early evangelists, we could say, uh, is Piali, and uh, so I'd like to invite you to share your story. Um, and then changing your life is great, but you know what we need to do is be effective at work. So let's see how we can take this concept and apply it to be more effective at work with our stakeholders and with our managers. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, sure. Great. I'm glad you're in agreement. <laughs> the silent majority, if they're still here, that means they're in agreement. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is um, uh, take a moment to introduce myself. Uh, what you're seeing is an actual a uh, picture of my calendar and my desktop and all the things that I was working on. Um, and I was organizing my time in so-called Pomodoros, increments of 25 minutes, you know, trying to, trying to stay focused, trying to get better at getting things done. And I realized I was working like crazy. And uh, if you look closely at the calendar, you'll see that I'm even organizing my Sundays into increments of 25 minutes. Uh, the only difference is I get to sleep a little bit later on Sunday. And I was running and running and running, and I was hoping to make my business more solid. And I realized I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm working so much and so hard, I don't have any more hours to work. And so, you know, there's got to be a better way. And what I realized is, you know, we all have the same amount of time, but the problem is I'm just doing everything and I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. And there was a key question that I wasn't asking myself, okay? And that key question is simply, what really matters? Because that question gives me context to uh, answer all the other questions about how I wanna spend my time and what I wanna do and what do I wanna not do and who do I wanna work with and who do I not wanna work with? And um, it's just, you know, it just gives context. 
And so, you know, that discovery led me to uh, create the framework, uh, which I'm going to share with you now. And um, yeah, so let's take a look at it. Let's look at this question, uh, what really matters? Um, you know, as I explained in the beginning, um, my day job is I'm a Scrum trainer. Uh, I discovered Scrum mm, probably in about 2005 or 2006. Um, I actually realized much, much later my first Scrum project was in 1993. Um, and, but I didn't know it at the time. And um, you know, my reaction to Scrum was, wow, finally a way of organizing people uh, that makes sense. And you know, back then you couldn't just go to a Scrum class, so I had to figure out Scrum for myself and then teach everyone around me, um, first of all, that they wanted it, and second, how to do it. Um, <coughs> and you know, I was kind of a, well, I went from uh, challenge project to challenge project as a project manager. And once I switched to Scrum, I just went from success to success. And that was pretty awesome. And very quickly, I realized I wanted to be a Scrum trainer. Um, much, much later, I realized that, as I say, I was working too hard. Um, I was not practicing what I was preaching about sustainable pace. And with many things, um, how shall I say? The, when you notice that there's a difference between what you preach and what you practice, there's a potential for learning there. And so I decided to explore that further, um, and that became the basis for you know, my book in progress on personal agility, uh, which I'm writing together with uh, uh, fellow Scrum trainer Maria Mattarelli. Um, so I come to, um, uh, I spend most of my time doing, giving Scrum classes, CSM, CSPO. I've come to India a couple of times. I'll be coming back in the fall, uh, in November, uh, for another round of training. Uh, I do mentoring both for aspiring CSTs and also for people who are trying to transform their organizations into a more agile entity. Um, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at that challenge. Um, we got a couple of uh, um, couple of cases that that might resonate with you. Um, this was uh, this was actually one that you tipped me off to. Uh, you know, having too many bosses and they all have lots of work for me to do, uh, but none of them can tell me what to do next. Um, this next case is, uh, this was, I think, whoops, come back here. Um, this was really my case. I, you know, see that stack of papers? I was really, really good at getting that stack of papers done. Uh, the problem is the better I got, the faster the, um, uh, the stack of papers grew. And, you know, just, just, I, I could churn faster and faster. I was like a, a hamster in a hamster wheel. Um, but I did, it didn't really, um, uh, well, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what to do, and then when I did it, it, it wasn't helping me as much as I would hope. And perhaps the last one, uh, and this is the trickiest one, is the whole topic of saying no. Uh, and this is something I learned in my travels to India uh, in particular, is that, that no can be a very, very dangerous word because it's always confrontational. And you know, if you say no, that there's a chance to uh, you know, that you're going to lose face or lose a customer or lose your job or lose a relationship. And so, you know, you've got to be careful um, saying no. And, and at the same time, I have too much to do. So somewhere I need to say no, don't I? And <coughs> so this is really the question. Um, I've got too much to do. I got lots and lots of things I could do, but I've only got a certain amount of capacity. And what I realized is that some of the things that I could do make a difference, and some of them just keep me busy. And so I started asking myself, uh, how can I focus more on the things that matters and spend less time on the things that I would consider to be waste? So what I'd like to do is share with you three easy tools for doing that. Uh, we're going to understand the challenge. Uh, the second tool is actually the six questions. Uh, and the third tool is an information radiator to help you understand the answers. So let's take a look at understanding the problem. Um, basically, if you want to get the right things done, there are three things you need to be able to do. Uh, the first thing is actually do them, you know, doing work. Uh, you do the work of your life. Uh, you need to be able to write things down so that you remember them, and then you need to be able to come back to that list and get them done. The second thing is setting priorities, because some things matter and some things don't. So you have to be able to decide uh, what matters um, and then focus yourself on doing the ones that matter first so that you're certain that they get done. Now, this implies that you know what matters, that, that you've got something to prioritize against, because saying do this, not that is easy, 
but if you don't have something to refer to, well, um, what's going to happen? You're going to get lost. Uh, and so finally, the thing you've got to do is you've got to be able to question or challenge yourself and say, well, am I working according to priority? And have I set the right priorities? Okay, and you know, those of, out, those of you out there doing Scrum are going to recognize this because Scrum implements a very, very similar pattern. Uh, we've got a development team which solves the problem, which does the work. Um, we've got the product owner, who's the voice of the customer, um, whose job it is basically to set priorities and decide when things are done. And then we've got the voice of common sense, that is the Scrum Master, whose job it is to help the other two roles and the rest of the organization um, you know, work, work together more effectively. Now, when you're doing things, when you're managing your own life, things are a little different because there's just you. Now, I can pretend to be three people who I'm going to call me, myself, and I, um, but we have to cover all of these, all of these three aspects. And I actually, I, I found that the, the body is kind of an interesting metaphor because basically our head does most of the thinking, and so our head is responsible for setting priorities. Uh, most of the work, however, is done by our body, and it's actually surprising how much intelligence is distributed through our nervous system uh, throughout the body. Um, and then someone needs to remind you to be nice to yourself, but someone also needs to ask you, ask yourself, are you doing the right thing? So I call that the heart. So we've got like the, the head setting priorities, the body doing the work, and the heart um, questioning you, but also reminding you to be nice to yourself. So let's take a look at those six questions uh, to help you get the right answer. And the first question you've already heard, you know, and that question is what really matters? Now, the problem is if you already know the answer to that question, it's very easy to use the answer to guide, you know, your decision making for through the rest of the questions, through the rest of your rest of the week. Um, but it can actually be a little bit difficult to figure out what really matters. So if you don't know right off the top of your head, that's okay. You know, just, just relax and, and let things emerge a bit. Um, the next question, what did I do last week? Now, I'd encourage you to reflect for a moment. What did you do last week? Do you even know what you did last week? Sometimes I feel like I'm working so hard, I barely remember what I did yesterday, much less last week. But the thing is, if we don't know where we're coming from, how do we know where we're going? And, you know, if we don't realize that we've accomplished, you know, how do we know to congratulate ourselves and pat ourselves on the back? So I actually find that being able to answer this question is, is very, very important uh, to help us move forward effectively. Uh, I call this celebration, okay? Celebrate what you got done, even if it was slightly different than what you set out to do before you uh, started the week. Okay, now the next two questions are about triage, about looking at all the things that you could do, figuring out what's important and what's urgent, um, you know, so that you, you know, you've got the big picture, you know what it is that you want to be doing. Now, one of the key concepts here is the difference between urgent and important. So if I have a telephone and that telephone, you know, the card runs out of money, the telephone stops working. So recharging my phone is urgent, okay? If I don't do it, something bad is gonna happen. And if I let the balance go down low enough, something bad is gonna happen fairly soon. Um, on the other hand, writing my book is important. If I don't write my, a chapter in my book this week, nothing bad is gonna happen, but I'm not gonna get the benefit of the book uh, if I don't. Okay, and so given all the things that you could do, given the things that are important, given the things that are urgent, what would I like to get done today, this week? Now, you can phrase this, what's doable, okay? So the idea is there's probably more things in those uh, as the answer to those previous two questions than you can actually get done. So the idea is to kind of choose what it is that you want to do. And what do you use to decide? Well, you go back to that question, what really matters? And the things that really matter uh, are the ones you're going to do first, okay? So I call this choosing. And the idea is to do this once a week or so, maybe a little bit more often, maybe a little bit less often, it kind of depends. Uh, the idea is you celebrate what you got done last week, you choose what you want to get done this week, always evaluating things in the context of what really matters. <clears throat> and so the idea is coming into the week, you are somebody, you did something. Next week, you're going to do some stuff, and 
you want the things that you do to take you a step closer to whoever it is that you want to be. Now, some of you uh, may have noticed that that's only five questions. What's the sixth question? And the sixth question is, who can help? And I found this to be an extremely useful question whenever I'm stuck, because you know, asking for help can always be useful. Sometimes even just asking, thinking about it from the perspective of someone else. Who could help me with this problem? Ah, George, what would George say about this problem? And you know, this gets me thinking to help me get unstuck. So these are the questions. And you know, those of you who are familiar with Agile will, fam will be familiar with the concept of a priorities map. We have a simple uh, information radiator. The first column is what really matters to remind you what really matters. And the rest of it is for the planning and triage and keeping track from waiting to working to done. Um, those two columns all the way on the right are what I call the breadcrumb trail. And they help you realize what it is that you got done, where are you coming from, because where you're coming from predicts where you're going to. And so if you're saying, I want to be a family man, but you're not doing anything for your family, well, what's wrong with this picture? And in fact, in my, um, in my priorities map, you can see that I've got family as my number one priority. I put a little green dot on it to note that it's family, but you don't see any green cards in what, I, what I'm thinking about doing. So what's wrong with this? Well, if I want, really want family to be my top priority, then I probably need to do something for my family this week, and I need to add a green card there somewhere. Anyway, so after I've been doing this for about six months, uh, well, actually, after I figured it out, I started talking to, to people about it. I, I've probably been doing it for about three months. Uh, when I talked to, uh, to Hardy, or Hartmut uh, Gildanovsky, uh, he was the head of uh, human center design uh, for a large, um, uh, let's just call it a large Swiss communications company. And six months later from him, I got an email out of the blue, three words, this really works. Now, some of you might be asking, why should you, you know, why should I believe Peter? I mean, he comes in in a webinar, you know, obviously he's an evangelist for this. Well, when I started working with Marie on this, we decided, you know, we needed some case studies for our book. And so we came up with the idea of a recognition system so you could become a recognized practitioner. And the way you become a recognized practitioner is we have a coaching call where we talk to people, you know, people who are using uh, personal agility. Um, and we talked to them about what they're getting out of it, okay? And, uh, you know, so we started out by interviewing about uh, 10 people who were using personal agility about what they got out of it. And you will notice in the lower left-hand corner, we see our very own Piali was the first recognized practitioner. Okay, and so at this point, what I'd like to do, Piali, is hand over the, uh, hand over the microphone to you and Tell your story. How did you get into personal agility? What did, what did it do for you? Sure. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so here I start my part. Mm -hmm. can you let me know uh, if you can see my screen. Not yet. So you need to make me a presenter. Oh, that is easier said than done. <laughs> uh, Because right now, ah, there you are. Okay, so at this point, you should now be a presenter. Yes, I see your screen. Yes. It's fine now? Yep. Okay, so hello again, friends. I'm Piali. Uh, many of you might be already knowing me because we have been interacting over the webinars for quite a long time now. In case somebody is attending the session for the first time, so here's a small intro of mine. I'm an agile facilitator and uh, working with uh, Eisenbridge since 2014, where I take care of our Scrum user group Discuss Agile Network. I take care of all our uh, community events, webinars, uh, meetups and conferences. I facilitate those sessions. I have been uh, studying about uh, personal agility. I have attended a course from Peter last year. And recently, I have started uh, working with Peter as a personal agility recognized ambassador. And here are some of the certifications I have done. So that's about me. 
now uh, comes the story about personal agility am i audible friends uh, i'm not sure uh, i can hear you okay okay i guess uh, in between something happened so first i would share the challenges before i was doing personal agility the struggle was like i have a long 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 backlog always piled up with tasks i didn't have any clear prioritization uh, in my mind so everything was important for me every task is important and what happens when you don't have a clear priority in your mind you don't know what to do next i'm not sure what i'm going to do next that was the biggest challenge and yes i was always running out of time i was moving 10 tasks at the same time in my in process column so everything is in process and uh, nothing is getting done that was my challenge uh, before i was uh, using personal agility so here comes the experience uh, when i started using personal agility for a few months i used uh, i created my own priorities map as peter said using the six questions of personal agility but i realized uh, while creating my own map uh, once there was a like yeah that's a clear uh, priority in my mind but the best part was i discovered something very important about myself very interesting about myself which i was not knowing about me so when i was creating my own priorities map initially there were uh, three areas i have added uh, my uh, relationship my health professional growth in the what really matters column and when i was uh, uh, posting the what i did in the last week what what were the aha moments from my uh, last week and what all i have enjoyed a lot i realized i noticed there were significant amount of time i was doing something else it's not like i was not uh, devoting time to my professional growth or my health but apart from that i was enjoying something else which was making me feel very complete and that 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 point of time i came to know about my passion and that was photography yes i did gardening also but uh, yeah photography was my passion which i discovered at this point of time and uh, yeah that made me feel very happy very accomplished i started my own website where i i post uh, my photographs and i'm planning for uh, doing some professional course about photography also so that was a very uh, very important point for me i was not knowing about myself and after using personal agility that was an eye opener for me so that is one point and another thing is not about just uh, my personal thing personal agility has helped me in my professional goal as well it has helped me a lot in uh, learning the stakeholder management since i i work in a community environment like i am a community evangelist and i i have to uh, do work in multiple teams at the same time so what happens sometime i have a multiple manager at multiple bosses at the same time i have a like a real life example when i'm working in aizen bridge i'm working under saket under his guidance some project is going on last year what happened i was working uh, as an organizer in, in a regional scrum gathering which happened in india bangalore last year so i was working with vibhu and his team with solution iq people sometime i work with peter for uh, personal agility so there are a lot of thing together i am doing and what happens lot of coordination issue time management issue and uh, setting a priority which work i need to do first am i still audible uh, i have peter can you hear me i can i can still hear you okay that, that's that's great so these things i have uh, faced in my professional thing and another thing my mm -hmm. own team uh it's a remote team i am in bangalore india and a uh, few of my team members are there in gurgaon so uh, we have a lot of coordination issue i used to face 
and personal agility has helped me a lot to overcome all those issues it has helped me to create an alignment with my stakeholders my managers my team members here i'm uh, going to share few points about uh, the stakeholder management so here are few points uh, which helped me a lot in stakeholder management from personal agility at first what i did i had uh, make a list of my stakeholders with with whom i need to work who all are there i need uh, i need to make a clear list of those stakeholders in my mind secondly what i did uh, the main goals or objectives what they want to achieve through this project or this collaboration what my stakeholders want to achieve i need to understand that so that was the second step third step what i did i i had discussion with them i i tried to understand what are the main challenges to achieve those goals and the, uh, or those desired outcomes so what all challenges impediments they had in mind for those uh, goal achievement and then what what were their risks what are the concerns they had what all fears they have in the uh, achieving those goals so after understanding all those another point comes this is a definition of awesome what is this it's like if all things goes well all your wishes come true what is the best possible scenario you have about this project so i try to understand from my stakeholder what is his or her dream wish or desired outcome best possible outcome and how does it look like and next possible step how can i support to make this wish come true make this best possible situation come true so these are the few points i i followed from personal agility in stakeholder management which helped me to create an alignment with my team members and with my managers as well so after uh, applying this stakeholder management my uh, task list my coordination with my team members my time allocation has been much more better now so we have a clear, clear idea in mind which task we need to do first what are our clear priorities and how we are going to uh, divide the timeline about it so this was the stakeholder management uh, from personal agility in my case so after that in a nutshell what i can say uh, not just personally personal agility has helped me both personal and professional life management in a very well way now i know what i need to do first i have a clarity in my mind i have a clear priority in my mind when you have a clear priority in mind you can manage your time very well i know what to do next and i have i can see my increased productivity after using personal agility for few months another thing which is very helpful for me i have stopped procrastinating things one example is there i would like to share with all of you i was planning to join swimming class for a long time more than 2 years after using personal agility for 3 to 4 months i have joined the class and i have completed 20 sessions and i was very ha happy about it woo woo good job yes yes that was a real life example for me it was <laughs> it was there for more than 2 years and after doing personal agility i have moved that sticky from in process to uh, done when i have created my priorities map after personal agility so overall it's like purpose and passion got blend well together because i believe uh, doing what you love is never a work or task for you you are following your passion that's all uh, personal agility has been for me it's a revolutionary framework worked for me that okay thank you that's all oh. my side my experience uh, if you if you want to know more about uh, my experience or uh, priorities map how i created it here are some of the informations contact informations and uh, back to you peter so you can take this forward
Okay, well, thank you so much, Pielli. What I'd just like to do, and said, first of all, thank you so much for, for, your, for your awesome story. Um, what I'd like to do, as I say, we did all of these interviews, and so I'm just going to walk through the list here. I'm going to let you guys read it. I'm not going to, this means you're actually going to have to pay attention to the presentation for a second. Um, you know, the things that, the benefits that people have been reporting to us that they get through uh, doing personal agility. And when I look at that list myself, um, geez, which one of them have been, have, have applied to me? Number one, number two, number three, boy, number four, number five, well, number, I, I still say no to the wrong things, or still say no to things that I probably, no. I say yes to things I probably should say no to. That That is a really a big challenge. Point number six, the ability to set and achieve long-term goals, uh, also point number seven. Um, so I would say out of those nine things, I've probably personally experienced at least seven of them. Um, so what I'd like to do before we go on to the, you know, how do you, uh, uh, how, how do we use the nine questions for alignment? Um, just like a brief summary, how do you use personal agility to change your life? And the answer is it's real simple. Uh, you ask yourself the six questions, um, preferably once a week, um, maybe a little bit more often, a little bit less often, it depends. Uh, you use the priorities map to, uh, to visualize your answers because that makes it easier to act on them. Um, and fundamentally, your answers to these questions, you know, what's important, what's urgent, what really matters, uh, these guide your choices about what to do. Um, and by doing things that matter, you take yourself in a direction um, that's, well, that's where you want to go. So I'm going to switch presentations here because we want to talk about, um, you know, how do we create that alignment with the stakeholders? Um, I, I have to admit to my shame that I talked a little bit too much in the first half of the talk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right to the point uh, in the second half of the talk. Uh, <coughs> so let's talk briefly about alignment. Um, you know, alignment is is a really important thing in organizations. It's it's so important. It's actually a core value in the scaled agile framework. Um, you know, probably what they value over everything. And you know, one of the questions that people keep asking is, how do you take agile and make it big? How do you scale it up? Well, it turns out, you know, agile frameworks usually do just the opposite. They take a big problem and they make it into a lot of little problems, and we call that descaling. So what I want to do is, um, you know, basically personal agility, um, these, these questions, uh, the six questions that you already know plus the nine I'm going to share with you, uh, they're about descaling alignment. They're about saying, let's make that problem of alignment smaller, and that makes it easier to solve. Now, alignment is really a huge problem, okay? And I, I, I came across an article that said, well, if you ask the top 20 people in the company, um, what are the five most important things we have to do this year, you know, you'll get 150 different answers. And when I first created this presentation, I went looking for that article, and I couldn't find it. And the reason I couldn't find it is because there were so many articles about the problem of, of alignment. Um, so one of the ones I found was this one from Forbes. And as you see, only two-thirds of the companies try to have a strategy. Um, less than 15% of the employees actually understand what the organization strategy is, and fewer than 10% can successfully execute. Now, another way to phrase that is more than nine companies out of 10 fail at their attempts to execute their strategy. It's all about alignment. Now, how do we descale the problem? Well, probably many of you have heard of a gentleman named Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek says, start with why. Okay, and he talks about the, uh, you know, the golden triangle. Everybody knows what we do. Some of us know how we do it, and very few of us know why we do it. Well, what's interesting about why? Why is what drives decision making. People do things for a reason. Now, I call what really matters the answer to those deeper whys. Now, if two people agree on what really matters, that means their decision making is going to be based on the same you know, the same fundamental principles or priorities. So if they agree on what matters, you know, if they go off and make a decision, they're going to be pulling more or less in the same direction. Now, obviously, they need to get in touch with each other from time to time to stay synchronized to make sure that they're still aligned. But basically, the way we get alignment is by getting people to um, agree on why. 
Um, so, you know, if we go back and look at those questions, the six questions of personal agility, you know, they're all for figuring out what really matters and then making sure that what you do is aligned with what really matters. Now, I have a whole section on how we can um, use those questions to interview, uh, say, your manager or a stakeholder, you know, kind of once you've figured out what really matters to stay in sync on what really matters. I'm going to skip over that because we're kind of short on time. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go to the, um, uh, what we call the stakeholder canvas, okay? Nine questions, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, um, how do you figure out what really matters to your stakeholders? Okay, and you see we've got this nice little color-coded chart here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, uh, although probably even that is still a little bit hard to read. Uh, you will see the left column has got... Um, uh, two kind of oranges cells. These are the first questions to ask. Uh, these are the who questions. Uh, then we get to the why questions, you know, the blue cells. Uh, then we talk about the desired outcome, uh, which is the green cells. Uh, and then finally, on the basis of all that we learned through these questions, we try to, to nail it down to what really matters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the questions. Um, by the way, as you'll see in the footnote here, you can download this, um, uh, the stakeholders canvas. I just noticed it's still the black and white version. We got a color version. I've got to get that up on the, uh, get that, get the color version up on the web. Um, but the questions are the same. So what you're going to do is you're going to use these nine questions to figure out what really matters, uh, to your manager, to your stakeholders. You can use them with pretty much anyone. They're, they're, they're coaching questions. So let's, let's start. So now, if, if we listen, if we talk about start with why, I've only heard one rebuttal to start with why, and that is start with who. And the rebuttal goes this way. He says, I'm a salesman. I can talk to someone all day about why something is a wonderful product, but if the person doesn't want to buy, can't buy, doesn't have money to buy, isn't authorized to buy, etc., I'm wasting my time. So rather than start with why, I start with who, and make sure that it's worth talking to the person. Now, <coughs> when you ask the person who they are, what is their role, you're also expressing an interest in them, um, which is fundamentally you know, flattering. Everybody wants, you know, is looking for recognition from other people. So you start out by making sure you understand them. Now, the way I use this form, or the, 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 this template, it's, it's kind of like the Lean Canvas you know, the, the, the lean canvas is for trying to figure out what your customers want, um, you know, what product your customers want to buy. This is more trying to figure out what are your stakeholders looking for? What is their dream, dream result? Uh, so that you can basically help them work to their dreams. And so the way you use it is you ask them the question, listen to their answers, repeat their answers back to them to make sure that you've understood them and they know that you've understood them. That's even more important. Um, and then, you know, once you've heard their answer, then you can say, oh, by the way, and, you know, here's my answer to the same question. So you're basically leading them through a, uh, leading them through this process of exploring who you are, why you want to do things, what you want to do, and, but at the same time, sharing information and building alignment uh, on what really matters. So first question, who are you? What is your role? Uh, try to understand them. The second question is about what you're trying to achieve together. Uh, maybe you're doing a project, maybe you've got some sort of other collaboration. What's the goal? Um, this is probably you know, what they actually sold to you know, their, you know, their stakeholders or to their investors or, or you know, whoever uh, approved the project. What are we trying to accomplish? Now, <coughs> now we want to start understanding the problem. So if this is the goal, question number two is about the goal. Three, four, and five are about understanding the problem. So what are the main challenges to achieving this goal or this objective? Okay, and the person might talk about technical risks or you know, similar challenges. Uh, you might share your, this is also a place to share your own experience. Well, you know, you know creating a website's pretty good and the design we've got under control, but you know, there's, there's some stuff here about these interfaces that you know, they could be a bit tricky because of all the software we're trying to integrate, okay? So, you know, once again, trying to understand the problem. This is the problem that needs to be solved. Call it technical challenges. After that, we start moving to the, to the people. What are your biggest concerns? Now, 
I've, I've taken a fairly neutral way of asking this question. You could say, what are you afraid of? But especially if you don't know the person very well, they might not answer the question, oh, hey, I'm a CEO, I'm not afraid of anything. Um, you know, but on the other hand, there are more subtle ways to ask the question, like what causes you to lose sleep at night? Okay, and so what you're trying to, fit, to tease out here are what do you see as being the risks of the project? And they might be technical risks, but they might also be political risks, you know? I'm, you know, one of the things that worries me is, are we really gonna get all the developers that we've asked for uh, when we need them? Or are we gonna have to wait for them because some other project is more important? Okay, so this is a, this is a way of getting at fears, risks, and, and concerns. So fears and risks is more looking forward. What frustrates you is more looking at the present and backwards. You know, every time we re release a feature, um, on our website, we turn it on to the public and we have such a disaster with it that we have to turn it off and fix it again for three weeks before we can really release it, okay? Oh man, that's frustrating, okay? So what you're trying to figure out, what causes him to, get, to bang his head against the wall, okay? Now notice, all of these things, what you're trying to learn is what you can do for your stakeholder that's going to make them appreciate you and like you and see that, ah, you're, you're helping them and so they're gonna help you. Okay, so like if you can do something about that frustration, hey, that is going to, you know, you're in a friend for life by doing things like that. Um, another way to look at this is to say, what is the best possible outcome? What's your definition of awesome? Okay, we're trying to, you know, yeah, we're going to achieve the goal, but what is this goal supposed to achieve for us? What is the state, you know, that we're trying to do? Um, so to give you an example, uh, two weeks ago, I was in Vietnam, uh, Ho Chi Minh City. I'd never been to Vietnam before to teach a scrum class. And I'm teaching a scrum class with two co-trainers. And I was really worried because the Vietnamese have a very, very shy reputation. And, you know, they're very, very distrustful until they get to know you. And so I'm thinking like, well, you know, how am I going to make, you know, my worst fear was that, um, you know, that, that, that I'll do something clueless and stupid and they'll, you know, let's say, oh my God, this guy's an idiot. You know, we don't want to talk to him. You know, let's get out of the class as quickly as possible. Um, you know, so the first thing I did with my co-trainers is we had a conversation about what is the best possible outcome? And we talked about people being enthusiastic and, and wanting to do, you know, wanting to go out and do scrum and change their companies and change their world. And we said, okay, you know, given that that's the goal, how do we make this happen? And we started working you know, we had a clear concept of what we were trying to achieve, and much to our amazement, or perhaps not to our amazement, we actually achieved all that stuff. Last question, how can I help you? You've got some goal, I'm collaborating on this project, what can I do for you? Now, if I were creating a product, I'd be phrasing it more in terms of, you know, if I were gonna create a package, what should the package be? Um, you know, what help do you need? Um, you know, is, is there anything specific that I can do for you? You know, so you're trying to understand, you know, what what you can do which will be helpful, which is going to earn uh, earn brownie points for you, or earn points uh, that you say, oh yeah, this guy's a good guy, we can work together. Now, on the, on the canvas, question number eight, this is the yellow box, and you'll notice the yellow box is the last one we answer. Uh, in the yellow box, it says what really matters. And the way I use it is, as I'm listening to, to the answers to all of these questions, I'm, I'm letting all of these answers run through my mind, and I'm trying to pick out what's really essential. What are the four key, you know, three, maybe four key points which are really important to the stakeholder, okay? And some of it may be about the challenges, some of it may be about the fears, some of it may be about the risks, but you're trying to understand uh, what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And so what I would do is I would say, if I've understood you correctly, this is what really matters. Point one, point two, point three. Have I understood you correctly? Is this correct? Have I missed anything important? Oh yes, you forgot to mention user acceptance. Ah, okay, so we write down user acceptance. And so now I've got a clear, clear understanding of what really matters uh, to my stakeholders so I can orient myself to make sure that these three or four things really happen the way he or she wants them to. Um, and then finally, uh, what are the next steps? Okay, okay, so we've talked about this. Where do we go from here? Next step, one, two, three. Um, this is basic, uh, basic project management, okay? So I have been using this in a variety of contexts. Um, I found it helpful to build the relationship in the sales process. Um, colleague of mine used it to kick off a project where at the beginning 
uh, he was hired by a consulting company and the consulting company was afraid of talking to the end customer, uh, but they were also afraid of a disaster. And so we started using this to build trust among all of the, uh, all of the stakeholders uh, so they could actually collaborate with each other more effectively. So um, what I'd like to do is give you, you know, if you're going to do, per, you know, if, if you want to have more impact at work, um, if you want to have better relationships with your stakeholders, um, what I'd like to do is suggest a simple, um, you know, simple process, step one, step two, step three, on how you can do this. So the first thing is many people have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with their manager or their stakeholder. So, and if you don't, you know, it's, it's kind of a common thing to do. So schedule a regular one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, for the first time, I'd suggest using the stakeholder canvas to figure out what really matters to them. After that, you know, the rhythm kind of depends, but somewhere between once a week and once a month. And there you're going to focus more on the celebrate and choose. It's your priorities map, um, but you're letting the stakeholders set the priorities, review what you've accomplished, um, validate your understanding of what really matters. Perhaps things have changed since the last time you talked. Uh, if there are changes in priorities, then you can, you know, update your priorities map to reflect that. You know, and then as you're, you know, thinking about what to do moving forward, you know, doing that, uh, doing the choose part, the triage and choose, um, you know, set your priorities and goals accordingly. Now, the beauty of this, um, this is, um, you're not changing anything in the organization. So you don't have to, uh, you don't even have to tell them that you're doing personal agility. Um, unless, of course, they ask. Anyway, so that's basically how it works. Uh, I would like to share one thing with you, uh, which is the whole concept of certification. And, uh, you know, here we have, uh, here we have Piali. Uh, you'll notice it says recognized practitioner. She's actually, she's gone one level up. She's now a recognized ambassador. We don't have the logos for that yet. Uh, you know, we're still a young framework. That's still a work in progress. Um, so we've got three levels of certification. The third we call, the first we call a recognized enthusiast. Now the beauty of this is you don't even have to take a training to do it. You read the guide, start applying it for a month. Uh, you have a coaching call with uh, either Maria, myself, or a recognized ambassador, which basically means Piali. And assuming you are doing personal agility and understand the basis, basics of it, we'll recognize you as an enthusiast. Um, the second level is to uh, become a recognized practitioner. Uh, this is the prerequisite for all higher levels of um, uh, engagement in, in our community. And here you also have to take a class. Uh, we've noticed that people who take the class, uh, they learn about coaching, they learn about working with stakeholders, uh, they learn about getting things done, they have a much deeper understanding uh, of personal agility and how to make it work. Um, if you're saying, ah, personal agility is cool, I'd like to make it part of my, you know, part of my practice, part of my career, I'd like to apply it within the organization, uh, you can become a recognized ambassador. And among other things, this gives you the privilege of actually recognizing uh, enthusiasts and practitioners. So how to get started? Well, uh, what you're going to do is go to the Personal Agility website to download the guide to personal agility, uh, start applying it in your life with the Celebrate and Choose ritual. And what we recommend that you do is take the course. Uh, Maria Mattarelli, my partner, is organizing an online course. Uh, you can see the link here in the, uh, in the page, um, agileformulas.com at uh, PA India. Uh, we have special pricing and conditions for Indian participants because of the differences in the price levels between India and the rest of the world. And you can go to the Personal Agility homepage. You'll see a big, uh, uh, big button that says, uh, uh, request recognition, and that will take you to the process of uh, becoming a recognized practitioner. So anyway, so I hope with all of this, uh, I've gotten you, you've gotten curious. What I'd like to do is share some of my contacts uh, and the key links. You can download the guide. Uh, if you go to the Personal Agility website and, and sign up with us, uh, you join the book club and we'll keep you, um, keep you up to date on um, uh, you know, updates to the book and new chapters and, and coming events and things like that. So with that, the presentation is done. Uh, I realized that we said we'd, um, you know, we're scheduled until five o'clock. It's almost exactly five o'clock. Uh, on the other hand, if you'd like to hang around for a bit and ask some questions, uh, be very happy to take your questions. So Piali, can I pass the, uh, pass the word over to you? Sure. So, uh, uh, do we have any questions? Maybe yeah. you'd like to kick off with a question. Uh, <clears throat> let me check the question box. 
friends yeah. if you do have any question please type it in the chat box i think we should give them a couple of seconds to maybe half a minute sure, yeah. mm -hmm. type the question okay okay what was your biggest question when you first started doing this what was your biggest come again peter what was your when you first heard about this what was the biggest question in your mind okay so uh, is this a question to me you're asking well this no no i'm asking you to ask a question so that i can answer it what was the okay 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 so yeah I got all you. the people are thinking yes mm -hmm. okay yeah so uh we are getting some questions here Rajesh, oh, okay. If we have questions, we can we can use yeah. their questions. So we have uh, what is personal agile maturity? Rajeshwari is asking. Okay, uh, I don't know what is personal agility maturity. What do you, what do you mean by that? So I think we're going to have to have a follow up question to understand yeah. the. Uh, Rajeshwari, can you please elaborate your question a bit? Okay. Okay. So someone like, would like to see the steps like, of personal. Agility. Uh, CMM has like CMM has various levels. Yeah. So that is the follow-up part. Uh, what is personal agile maturity? And uh, next mm -hmm. we have step like CMM has uh, various levels. Okay. Um, let's put it this way: C CMM was was created by a large government organization, so they they have a large bureaucracy around of it and a whole co coaching, um, you know, coaching and training and consulting around it so they got they got lots and lots of levels um, personal agility starts out very very simple um, you know the first thing is just getting your own life under control um, you know which is the ability to you know figure out what you care about and do those things you know be able to uh, do those things first and actually get done the things that you care about and become the person you want to be um, I would say the second level is um, self-discovery Okay, so being able to understand who you really are and what you really care about. Uh, very often what you think is important or what really matters to you at the beginning, uh, after you've been doing it for a couple weeks or a couple months, you start to realize there are other things that are more important to you. Um, you know, and then I think finally, you know, the next level is actually becoming a leader among the people around you because you need you you know how to ask the right questions and figure out the you know help people figure out the answers so that they're all going in a direction that they want to go and that the group is going in a direction uh, that they want to go together um, so basically I would say that the, the next you know the, the the ultimate maturity level is that it's actually a leadership framework um, helping you and others figure out what's really important um, so that you can move forward Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that 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 sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a next question. Okay. Here. That's a, a bit a longer question. When yes. one asks questions, part of the nine questions you mentioned, how does yes. uh, one start without sounding condescending and patronizing? Also, uh, how do we set the stage to start asking these questions in an organic way? Okay, um, the way to not sound uh, patronizing is to not be patronizing, um, to be humble. Um, you know, what I usually do is I say, okay, so we're starting out something new, um, <clears throat> or we've been working, uh, uh, let's, let's say we're starting something new, that, that, that's perhaps the first case. So we start on something new, and I would say to the stakeholder, okay, um, what I want to do is, you know, I'm going to be doing this work for you, and I want to make sure that I understand what's really important. And I also want to make sure that, that you and I have a good basis to work together. So, you know, would it be okay if, um, you know, if we talked for maybe an hour or so to, you know, understand, you know, what are the key success factors to this project? Okay, and, and so basically the, what we're doing here is, is getting permission you know, and making clear that, you know, we have a reason that's also in the interest of the other person to have this conversation. And um, my experience using these questions, it's, it's actually possible just to ask them, you know, in a conversational format. Uh, I went once, I, this was again a scrum training. Um, at lunchtime, I had an invitation from, um, uh, from the head of IT for this organization that, you know, that we have a conversation and talk about what, what's going on. And, um, 
you know, so I said, you know, just almost starting out the conversation. So, you know, okay, so you're the head of IT. Um, you know, what does that mean? What are your most important goals? Okay, and that got the ball, you know, notice I validated, you know, where he was, so that was the first question. And then I went into the second question. Um, you know, and by doing this, you, you actually create a trusting relationship. And I was really surprised at his answer because his answer was to make a joke of, oh, you mean besides survival? And, you know, it's interesting. If, 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 the, convers if the style of conversation had been more formal, he never would have made that joke. Um, but at the time, you know, I really understood, uh, you know, what a difficult situation he's in. Um, so th these questions, if you ask them in the right tone of voice, uh, they actually build trust. And they enable you to get very, um, uh, very honest answers. Okay, so uh, one last question, and then we can wrap up the session. Okay. Someone asked me to put up the, the um, put up the flow again. Those six questions, and okay. uh, there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that up on the screen. The first six questions. There you are. So questions are up. So go ahead, Piali. Yeah. So uh, here we have uh, one question. Yes. Have you read a uh, uh, read book called Triggers? And if yes, how is uh, it different from personal agility? Like how personal agility is different from uh, that book, Triggers? OK. Unfortunately, I have not read the book, so I can't answer the question. Um, but uh, you've you've read the book, so you know maybe you could uh, maybe you could answer the question. And if you wanted to send me an email, um, you know, and tell me a little bit about what you see as being differences. So I'm assuming you have read the book. Uh, you know, that would be very interesting. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, last question. Just uh, Rajeshwari is saying, can you please repeat the three levels, like uh, the mapping, okay. self discovery, and uh, leadership. Um, I would call mapping to the, the first level I would call a basic skill of getting things done. Okay, being able to get the right things done. Uh, the second level is self discovery, and the third level is leadership. Okay, okay, okay. So I think we can close the session here. It's uh, like uh, we are <laughs> over the okay. time now. Okay. Okay. Well, what I would what I would like to do then, because I, I see that there are still questions there that we haven't answered yet. Um, what you can do is, if you go to the Personal Agility website, mypersonalagility.org, uh, you sign up. There is a forum applying personal agility, and if you ask questions in the forum, I will answer them there. Sure. That that would be great for them. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, yes, friends, uh, for follow up questions, you can go to the personal agility forum and you can post your questions there. And uh, from this session, you will get one SEO and one PDU. Uh, you will get all the details of claiming those SEOs and PDUs in next uh, one hour of time. You will get one email from GoToWebinar. You will get one uh, link of our discussion forum where all the details of recording SEU PTU will be there. If you still have any follow-up query, please post your query in the discussion forum. We can take care of that. And thank you, Peter. Thanks for this wonderful session. Thanks for your time. Thank you for the invitation, Piali, and thank you to everyone out there in internet land for uh, uh, taking an hour of your evening to join us. Uh, it is always an honor. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all once again for joining us. Good night.